How's it going everyone? Today I thought I'd go over the MEX template, kind of how it works, the benefits, the purpose, how to use it, etc. So as you can see, we have a character selection screen here with fairly low resolution portraits. And this is on purpose, because what I've done is I've essentially doubled the number of costumes in the build. So you can see kind of these silhouette colors. If you, after one full cycle of the normal Acania costumes, it goes through another cycle of all the costumes again, but in silhouette form. And the idea here is that you can replace those with whatever costume that you want. So for those of you that don't know, Acania is a build of Melee that kind of adds content to it, adds characters and stages and costumes. And so I've kind of used that as a template because in many respects, it lends itself pretty well to expanding the roster costume set wise. So uh, this is an example of what you'll get. And you'll notice at the end, we have these two Acania colors the same with every character it has two bonus colors and then another full set of colors is what you're seeing here you might ask yourself why are they so low res well that's the way that we're able to add more costumes and just and i'm talking dozens and dozens of costumes the the potential here is really awesome so i'll show you really quickly what these silhouette costumes are they're just the normal acania costumes they just they're, do a duplicate file of it and i'll show you a bit a bit more about how that works in a second so, with that out of the way, let's get into the files and things. Okay, so the three things you're going to need are going to be the MEX tool, which I'll provide a link in the description below. You're going to need Acania, the build itself, and I'll show you how to install that as part of this video. Um, and then you're going to need the pack, the MEX template pack that I will include a download for in the description. So, to install Acania, you'll go to this releases page and it'll grab... I, sh I should know, this currently works with version 0.82, and I don't know about future versions working. So that's why I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. So we're just going to download the latest release, which is currently 0.82. And then we're going to extract the contents, let's say in downloads. And then... We're going to open the Windows folder. You see it down here. I'm going to, it says drag your Melee 1.02 ISO here. I happen to have my vanilla Melee ISO here. I'm going to drag it over here. This is going to pop up. It's going to take one or two minutes or so. Usually doesn't take that long. And then once it's done, it's going to generate an ISO of the Acania build. And this is going to be your full blown more stages, more costumes. We're actually going to use a drag and drop pseudo patch, I guess you could, could consider it. And we're going to kind of bend Acania to our own uh, will here. Okay, it's finished. So now you can see this ISO here. I'm going to copy the location of this. And then I'm going to open MEX. And at this point, you're going to want to hit File, Open ISO. You want to navigate to where the ISO is. In this case, it's this folder. And it should, should, should say, say something like this, Acania Build 0.82. Open that. It'll load for a second. And now what you're going to see here, if you click Fighters and you go to Costumes, you'll see default Acania, including the other characters, Wolf, Diddy Kong, Charizard, etc. So the next step is, you just simply need to load it, simply need to open it in the MEX tool, then go to File, Export as File System. And let's, I'm going to create, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to create a folder in here called Acania File System, and hit Select Folder, and it's going to export all the contents of that ISO that we just generated, and it's going to spit it out into a file system that we're going to use, and that's where the drag and drop comes in. Okay, so that might take a minute or two, but once it's done, all the files will be dumped into that file system. So let's open up that folder really quick, and let's see what it looks like. So we have a structure here with files and SYS for system, and all the, the game files are in there. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the parent folder. So make sure you see something that says file and system. We're now going to go to our downloaded Melee Expanded Template Pack. And we're going to open the drag and drop folder. Do you see where it says files right here? You're going to want to drag and drop this files folder over this and replace the files and add the files that are there. 
So I'm simply going to click and drag. And I'm, I'm going to copy it actually, but you can move it, it doesn't matter. And it's going to do this, and it's going to say, do you want to replace the files there? And you're going to say, yes, replace the files. Okay, so close out of MEX completely. Then you're going to open the MEX tool again. You're going to hit, in this side, instead of hitting open ISO, you're going to hit open file system. And here's the generated file system that we just modified. Make sure you can see files and system and click select folder. Now we're going to click fighters and we're going to see if there's differences. Now you can see all the silhouettes and the smaller portraits have been added and the additional characters have been removed. The reason we remove the additional characters in this list is because it helps us give us more space for the base roster characters in terms of number of costumes. And I've gone through already and I've duplicated every Kirby hat. So like down here you can see for example that there's this list of Kirby costumes that you need to do for certain characters. I want to point this out quickly. For Donkey Kong, for see Jigglypuff, Mewtwo, and Falco, they have certain Kirby specific costumes you need to account for. So whenever you add a costume for Kirby, you're going to want to add have to add Kirby costumes for that also. So now I'm going to get into how to kind of add and, and do all those things. So let's say, for example, I want to add a Kirby costume because that'll be the most most involved. Actually, before we do that, let's just do a fox costume to make it simple at first. Okay, let's say we want to download this blue fox by Gen Next. We're going to click this download link here, and you want to note the file name PLFXLA, and this means it goes over a specific costume slot. You can't just swap around costumes in Melee, so they'll usually specify like which costume it goes over, but if they don't, usually they'll leave it in the file name. So let's say we click that and we download that, I have it right here. Notice I've renamed this to, it might be something like this, rename it to F PLFXLA2. And the reason we're doing that is because you'll notice on these extended slots here, we have the normal file names and then we have them ending in two. And the, again, these are designed to be replaced, right? So I'm gonna identify the PLFL, PLFXLA2 here. It looks like it exists. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this over. We're gonna copy this. And we're going to go to our file system, our Arcania file system that we just generated. And we are going to paste and replace the file there. Okay, so now what we've done is we've basically taken the, the costume we've downloaded and we've replaced it in the file system. So now we're going to hit save. And we're going to export this as an ISO. And we can call it Modified Acania Build. Let's do that. So we're going to save it as a new ISO. And then we're going to open Slippy and see if it works. And by the way, you have to make sure that Slippy is set so that when you open, when you launch the game, it opens D Slippy Dolphin, doesn't just launch the game immediately or you will not be able to take advantage of alternative ISOs like this. Okay, now that it's open, let's check the costume slot and see if it works. So we're gonna navigate all the way to that silhouette, that blue silhouette, and hopefully this light blue fox will appear. And check it out. In game, we have the light blue fox that we downloaded from SSVM Textures, and it was as simple as replacing one file. And here it is. And we didn't replace the default Lavender Fox either. This is an this is a extension. So in other words, I can go back to the character selection screen. I can use the normal Lavender Blue Fox, no problem. Whereas in the past, it may have required you to replace this fox outright. We now have the, the fortune of having both foxes. We have the extended light blue one that we downloaded, and also this lavender one. So that's the benefit of this extend, extension pack, this template is you don't have to replace vanilla costumes just to add in additional new ones. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's move on to a few edge cases. So as I mentioned earlier, you have to note every time you add a Kirby costume, you need to account for those four characters additional costumes. So we'll use that as an example in our next... Let's say you want to add more than the number of costumes. Like Kirby already has 14 costumes, but if you want to add an additional one, let's say you go on SSBM Textures and you discover another Kirby costume that you want, Let's use this for example. Let's find Kirby. All right. 
let's say you want to use this cursed waddle do Kirby for whatever reason. So this doesn't really specify very clearly what it's over. So let's extract, let's open the zip and see if we can identify that. Okay, there we go. So this is clearly intended to go over the yellow Kirby costume. So what we'll do is we're going to extract this to whatever location that you want. We're going to rename it to Kirby Yellow 2. We're going to copy this. We're going to visit. In fact, actually, for in this particular case, we want to add a new costume. I forgot. We're not replacing the yellow one here. We're actually adding a net new one, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this to Yellow 3. And you can really name it whatever you'd like, but I'm going to keep the naming convention that I set up. So I'm going to copy this costume file with 3 at the end of it. I'm going to open this and paste it, and it shouldn't replace anything. You're just adding this new file to your file system. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the original yellow costume, and I'm going to hit this clone costume button. And that's going to open up a duplicate of that referencing the same file. And the only difference I'm going to do, well, there's actually going to be two. I'm going to make sure you rename this here from simply yellow to yellow three, because that's what we just named our one that we downloaded and added to our file system. And then just for my own sanity, and just so I can identify what this costume is, I'm going to replace the CSP as well the character selection portrait. And I'm going to pick an orange one because orange matches the color of the Waddle Doo skin that I downloaded. And the pack that I provided is going to include a bunch of templates, a bunch of these silhouettes for your convenience. All right, so now we have all the normal silhouettes that come with it. And now we have this additional orange one. And of course, it's not going to tell me exactly that it's the Waddle Doo costume. Um, but it gives me a really quick representation of that Waddle Doo costume. It will tell me, oh, when I go to the orange silhouette, I remember that gives me the Waddle Doo costume. When you actually clone and add to a Kirby costume, which the chances are you probably won't, but in case you do, you're going to have to go to every single of these characters. When I say, when I, what I said earlier with DK, Puff, Mewtwo, and Falco, and you're, you'll see this blank icon on the bottom. The game might crash if you don't get to this. So if you add, ever add a Kirby costume, there are additional steps. But luckily, that's pretty easy. It's just a little, a little bit tedious. So if you remember, we replaced the Kirby yellow costume. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this as a, as a base. I'm going to copy everything that I see from the yellow costume here, and I'm going to paste it onto the one at the very bottom. So we're going to paste that. We're going to scroll back up to yellow. We're going to copy this. We're going to go back down to the bottom here. And we're just going to repeat this process until every field is, cut, is uh, replaced. The only thing we don't need to worry about is this visibility table index. We can leave that at zero. Okay. So we've added Donkey Kongs. And now we're going to add the additional characters also. Same process. We're going to find the yellow, Kir the yellow Kirby costume. We're going to copy this. Scroll to the bottom of the list. Paste that. And repeat this process just like we did for the other characters also. Okay, now that's out of the way. Now we can save it and export it. Now, the, what we just did was we basically made it so that if, you know, if that Kirby happens to swallow an opponent and get their copy ability, if the game doesn't have a certain hat for that costume, the game will crash. And again, this is an edge case. Most of you probably will not need to add any more costumes to Kirby than what this template provides. And in most cases, you can just replace any of these template ones. But in my specific instance here, I just wanted to show you it was possible to clone that additional Kirby costumes. All right, so let's ensure that that worked. All right, so now let's go to our new orange silhouette Kirby. And I'm going to skip to the end of the list by hitting Y. And then we're at our orange costume. And then just to make things, I'm going to pick the very last Captain Falcon costume. And we're going to see if it crashes or if it works. All right, so here's our cursed Waddle Doo costume. It looks like it loaded properly. Let's see if what happens when I get Falcon's copy ability. It looks like it worked. So that's nice. Now let's pick a character that we had to explicitly add a costume for, like Mewtwo, for example. And we'll go to random. And let's try this. Okay, it worked. Now, Curry turned yellow. Um, and that's, that's an unfortunate byproduct of copying the copying the, the hat, right? Um, but if you wanted to, you could create custom 
Kirby hats, right? So if I wanted to go to all the trouble of creating a orange, you know, an orange color to match this waddle do, I could do that. And I could go through all those steps. Um, but really that's the most minimum viable way to reduce crashes. Um, so just to briefly explain that, let's say I go to Mewtwo and I go to this list. I can call this, for example, you know, PLKB Y E C P M T three. And if I'm a modder that knows what I'm doing, I can go to like the original one. I can go to P L C B yellow C P M T the base one here. And I can basically create a duplicate of this, but replace the textures with instead of how it's yellow right here, I can just replace these with orange. In fact, well, I'm not going to do that on in this video demonstration, but it'd be really easy to replace that. And then what I would do is, you know, I'd save that as a duplicate. And since I named it three to match the Kirby costume, I would just do that. And then it would load the new hat. So this is all possible and all something you can do. But again, I doubt most of you would do that, but I did want to cover it in case anybody wanted to. The last exception edge case I want to talk about is Game & Watch. So Game & Watch's costumes are unique from the others in that they only reference one costume file and MEX has a built-in way to add costumes to Game & Watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the default Game & Watch costume. And I'm going, to hit, I'm going to hit Clone. And let's say I want to do my own new color of Game & Watch. You can use this drop-down menu here. And I like to click the web options because there's more there. But you can type in any value that you want. And let's say I wanted a Dodger Blue Game & Watch. You can click this Generate UI for Game & Watch button right here. And what happens is, keep, uh, keep your eye on the stock icon and on the portrait. They live update based on the colors that you select, which is really, really neat. And what you can do is you can export this CSP. Call it Light Blue Game and & Watch. And now you have a CSP you can use. Um, and it will generate the default Acania size by default. And you'll notice that it's going to be larger than the other ones. If you really want to, you can export it. You can size it however you'd like, and then you can import it at the smaller size. So for the purposes of this template, the actual size of these modified portraits are 68 by 94, or about half the resolution of the de default CSPs. Um, but, but let's say I'm lazy and I don't want to even resize it. I can just use like one of the silhouettes that I got here. And look at that, it's already uniform. Um, it's the only silhouette in this list, but yeah, you get the idea. So now I'm going to save, and there you have it. This build, I want to mention that this build also comes with the dynamic stage loader from Uncle Punch. And so every time you load a battlefield, or every time you load an FD, or what have you, any tournament legal stage, it's gonna, it can randomly cycle through whatever you download. And I, I cover this in another video, um, but just for, and I'll actually link to that in the description if you're confused about that. But for example, let's say GROP has been replaced with dynamic and GROP alt one is default dreamland. If you want other skins of dreamland, do alt two, alt three, alt cetera. And that's all automatically built in for you. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of kind of an expanded template that you can use for Slippy online. If you have any problems or anything, let me know. And I hope you get use out of it. Thanks so much. I'll catch you guys on the next one.